Hi and welcome everyone, this is the Hobo Prepper. I am Friar Tuck. Thank you for joining me today. Okay, so today, uh, right now I'm leaving Quincy. Uh, I wanna talk a couple about a few things that you guys might be curious about, such as you know what my daily routine is when I'm on the road, and also uh, about camping, uh, finding camping spots and all those other things. Now, I do have, uh, I, I do do stealth camping, but uh, and I do, I have been showing you guys some pictures of some of the spots I've been finding, but uh, Cherokee asked about, uh, he asked about the, uh, the security and like big camps, small camps, you know, weaponry, stuff like that. And I will tell you just in my experience, this is just my experience. Now this isn't like standard for all, but this is what I'm used to seeing is that, okay, so when I went and I found my spot for me and the, and Sabrina and her mom, one of the things that you do is, is you're walking down a trail or you're looking in areas where you know the other hobos camp and stuff like that. You kind of, you're, you're kind of looking to see what's around. You're scouting on some sense. Uh, you know, uh, so for example, I went through the hole in the fence and as soon as I come through the hole, I see a tent. Well, I can't be there. So I got to move at least 500 feet in uh, the opposite direction of where that tent is or that camp is. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you want to use your natural barriers to kind of create your own little uh, natural fence. So again, when I found the spot for the for me and the two girls, uh, we had we had a, a hedges or tree line, whatever you want to call it, that that kind of acted as a as a barrier. So I couldn't see through, and they couldn't see through, and uh, that's kind of that's kind of what you use as your personal fence line. And you know, again, 500 feet away, you want to have barriers that kind of give you some sort of privacy. Uh, and uh, also, you know, there's the, it's kind of a, it's not necessarily an unspoken rule. It's just when you're when you're out there, you're only worried about you. You're not worried about your neighbors. I mean, you are, but you're not. You know, you're you're focused on you, and so, you know, we didn't we didn't meet some of our neighbors, and we met other neighbors. So uh, the lady that was on the other side of the hedge, uh, not the tent, but the but another neighbor, uh, her name was Blue, and we met her because she kind of had to walk around the perimeter of our camp. And you know, one of the things that you don't do is you don't walk through the center of anybody's camp. You go through the outskirts, you go around it, and um, it's generally a courtesy because, you know, sometimes you're in a tent, you can't see. So you hear something, you, uh, you know, somebody will call out what you want, what you want to do is at least announce yourself. So people will be like, who's out there? Are you taking my, no, no, no. I'm like, not just fry chuck, pass it through. You know, and that's generally what I say. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm going through, it keeps the, the peace and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not going to create issues. There is a, every once in a while where, like, you know, you get that that person that's just constantly rah, 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 rah. Uh, And then, you know, you go to walk by or around their camp and Who is that? Who is that? I just keep my mouth shut <laughs> I, I don't to mess with them, just kind of, you know, give them their own little uh, <laughs> You know, just to be an asshole You know, everybody thinks I'm a nice guy, but I'm not <laughs> uh, But, uh, <laughs> anyways uh, you know, so when it comes to when it comes to getting to know your neighbors and stuff now If you do get to know your neighbors and you do say hi to them like with blue She came around the perimeter of our camp. It's like, okay, that's fine And I didn't want her to to interact with our camp, but the girls being girls, you know Oh, let's socialize da, 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 da. It's like dude, you can't socialize with everybody. You need to be careful who you socialize with and you know, we we went through, and uh, so Blue comes through, and the next thing you know, she's bumming cigarettes, and she's, oh, I'll trade you this, and I'll trade you that. And it's like, look, lady, go away. I want my privacy. You know, because you know, one thing about being outside is when you're exposed, privacy becomes more and more important. That's why whenever I do my recordings, I always let the people around me know, look, if you don't want your conversation to be on YouTube, um, you know, kind of keep out of my way this is what I'm doing all right so 
uh, you know, as far as neighbors go, your neighbors, unless you develop a really good close relationship, they're not going to keep an eye on your stuff. You're not going to keep an eye on each other's stuff. But there is indirect security because the thing is, is you're watching what's going on around you and your your neighbors are also watching what's going on around you. So for example, in Puckett's camp, there was a white car that came through. Well, the only reason why he knows about the white car is because after he got some of his stuff stolen, he went over to the neighbors and says, did you see anything? But yeah, there was a white car that came through, you know, didn't think anything of it, didn't come into my camp. Because again, you're worried about you. You're not worried about anybody else. And that's the one thing that people fail to realize. You know, as much as you think that this is a team thing, it is, but it isn't. Okay? So, I mean, you have your campers that you camp with. Now, big camps versus small camps. Um, the biggest camp I've been in was the first camp, which is when uh, me and the girls met Puckett, and we met uh, we met the crackhead from New York and Little Mama, which you guys have seen me interview her. So, um, you know, the, the rule is there is there's always somebody that stays back and watches the camp. So sometimes you got to do coordination. Okay, I'm going in. I got to go take care of this, 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 and this. Okay, well, I need you back by this because I got to go do this. Okay, fine. And, and you guys do a rotation and it's shared security. Okay, it's nothing... It's nothing that's, uh, you're not, you're, you're, you're obligated. It's part of your, it's part of your overall, uh, your overall duties and obligations to the group. Because once you start camping in groups, especially the larger the group, the more you lose your autonomy. You know, so that's the way it is when you're dealing in large camps as far as security. Now, everybody has their own little tools and their weapons and stuff like that. And it's always something makeshift. Like a lot of the older guys, what they like to do is uh, they like to make themselves walking sticks. Those walking sticks are also beaten sticks. <coughs> but, you know, it takes a while. They'll sand it down. You know, I know a guy that's building like his second or third stick and he's trying to put compartments in it and stuff like that to where like it's a it's a sheath and he can pull it out and it's a sticker if he needs to so you know it's about being creative with what you have i mean do you have you know you're not going to want a gun that's one thing i'm going to tell you you're not going to want a gun you want something that's quiet um because if you have to take care of business last thing you want to do is advertise what the hell you're doing so having a gun is not a wise idea. A knife, a sticker, a rope, um, other creative things, that works. But you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna want anything that's loud. Because if somebody does come on your camp and uh, it is a threat, you know, you need to be able to dispose of them quietly in case there's others that are coming up, one. And two, maybe you might need to put a an unmarked grave somewhere, you know, and uh, hope nobody finds out. I mean, it's going to eventually come out, but, you know, you have the right to self-defense, okay? And make sure that, you know, when you're thinking about self-defense, you have to give multiple warnings, just like with a gun. You know, you can't just shoot somebody. You have to, uh, you have to give them warnings. You have to give them notice. You have to give them an opportunity to turn around. You know, and if they still don't, or they still come at you, then at that point in time, you're in self-defense mode. So, you know, as far as weaponry goes, that's one way to go. Now in smaller camps, it just, it works the same way as bigger camps, but it requires that, you know, you gotta do a much smaller rotation. So if there's three of you, one's gotta stay at camp at all times, and the one person that ends up getting stuck at camp, they generally get very resentful. So, you know, if you're gonna stick somebody at camp a lot, make sure that you give them some personal time so that they're not constantly feeling like they need to be, you know, doing this all the time because, yeah, Sabrina's mom was getting pissed at me 
because she was the one she was immobile she couldn't do anything so what's the point and letting her go out if she can't really go do anything you know and she's self-sufficient right there in the camp plus whoever's watching camp like if you're going to a food line make sure you bring them back food you know uh, there there is there is ways to take care of your fellow campers because you're all in it together and if you don't take care of the person that's watching your camp they ain't going to take care of your camp okay so those are some things to think about now if you're like me right now i'm on the road i'm doing stealth camping most important thing is leave no trace um i'm going to show you a picture if you stick around to the very end i'm going to show you a picture of what my campsite looked like this morning after I was done packing up. And all you see is a dry spot where my tent was. That's that. You couldn't tell that I was there. Uh, well, unless you knew that, because I had to move a bunch of brush and stuff off to the side so that, uh, uh, you know, it didn't uh, ruin my tent. But, you know, pack up, pack in, pack out. So when you go in to set up your camp, you go in, you set it up, you're, you know, that's why I always wait till near dark because you know you want to be able to have lights on to see and if you uh if you get your tent set up and everything else like that right as the sun's going down then you know you're stuck there in camp don't leave don't go anywhere don't make noises keep your flashlight to a minimum you know you gotta you gotta really make sure that you are uh you gotta make sure that you're not easily visible. That's why I use the dark green colors. Um, that's why I try and hide anything on my tent and my bike and my gear that is reflective. So last night, especially because it ran, rained, I put my blue tarp over it because one, it kind of blends in, and two, uh, the you know it, it takes it's not reflective. So it gives me an opportunity. To really uh it just gives me an opportunity to stay as incognito as possible now i mean it's kind of hard when they make everything have reflections uh, but there are some things that you could do but again one thing that i will remind you about is that uh you know cops and their flashlights they're, they're flashing it through what they're looking for is they're looking for that feedback on that reflection so you know that's uh when we had a sweep the other day the reflection on my jacket because it's a cycling jacket kind of uh well, even though he couldn't see me he could see the little reflectors on it which basically made me vulnerable so these are things that you need to really be thoughtful of to make sure that you can stay incognito because as the world breaks down, you're gonna value that more and more. Anyways, guys, if you wanna help the channel, like, subscribe, share, uh, come on over to Patreon, five bucks a month for daily videos, uh, 10 bucks a month for live stream replays, 20 if you wanna be a VIP, and you'll get my phone number and we'll be able to talk and communicate back and forth. You can give me suggestions, whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> you know, I also have my affiliate links, I have my tip jar, you guys know what to do. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.